Thank you, Dr. Akash, for uh, giving me opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Rutul and Dr. Dharmendra and all uh, PhD group team for uh, inviting me to uh, discuss a case-based discussion here. Uh, am I audible and visible? Yes, sir. So, uh, after a wonderful session about hypertension and pregnancy, we will have a good uh, case-based discussion about uh, postpartum uh, postpartum management of the GDM patient. So, whenever there is a pregnancy-related any illness, there will be a lot of confusion. There is a lot of controversy. And uh, each and every uh, statement do not supporting uh, have enough data to discuss, and we do not have a, any uh, hundred percent evidence for each and every molecules. So we have a, a wonderful discussion today about all the different different topics. Today, we, when we are discussing about uh, management of diabetic during pregnancy. We have a lot of discussion about pre-pregnancy control of sugar, what is the issue, counseling, what need to do, what need to do during a pregnancy, what need to control before the pregnancy, which protocol we have to follow. So today our talk will be restricted to case-based discussion in postpartum state. So <clears throat> whenever we think about any question about postpartum issue, there are a lot of confusion in our mind that uh, how patient was diagnosed during pregnancy, which was the type of the diagnosis, in which trimester patient was diagnosed and how it was controlled, whether patient was managed just with lifestyle modification or if insulin was needed, if yes, then which insulin, just controlled with basal or basal plus or what, which dose he has required, how frequent dose has been taken and how frequent monitoring has been taken what adverse effect can be possible to the baby after delivery, whether the patient has been undergone close supervision with gynecologist or not, which molecule we have to think about in postpartum phase, what are the change, chance of developing type 2 diabetes in GDM mother, what are the chances of developing glucose intolerance in baby, which investigation to do in postpartum. So there are a lot of questions keeping up and popping up in our mind whenever we see any postpartum female. So let's uh, uh, discuss some simple case that we encounter in our daily practice routinely. Here we have a 30 year old female, Mrs. Sudha. She was presented with itching the private part, nausea, lower abdominal pain, and she has got vein, weight about 4 kg in last two months. After delivery, she has an excessive appetite, she has craving for food, and she feels lethargic and tiredness. She has a consulted gynecologist for each in the private part. Gynecologist has done so many investigations and laboratory reports and uh, referred for further treatment. Just a two, back, two months back, she has delivered 3.8 kg baby at 34 weeks and caesarean section was done for uh, delivery. She had abnormal sugar level in last trimester which was well managed with basal insulin that is a levimir at a bedtime and aspart with lunch and dinner. 8 unit levimir was uh, received at bedtime and 6 and 8 unit with lunch and dinner respectively and uh, that was gradually updated till end of the delivery. After delivery, just after uh, finishing uh, uh, and delivered a baby, a babe, blood sugar was found uh, reasonably good and was closely monitored and uh, before discharge on third day postpartum, blood sugar was normal without insulin. On follow up, she has consulted gynecologist twice in last in 15 days after discharge, and everything was fine. Patient was asymptomatic. Initial glucose reading was done or, or 
daily basis on three to four days. Then, if when once the sugar was found normal as per advice, sugar was not monitored frequently and uh, was normal. She was not on any treatment after delivery, and later on she was not monitoring any sugar data. While evaluating detailed past history, there was no significant uh, illness. Her father had type two diabetes, and he was taking the uh, he oral hypoglycemic agents. Vital data was normal. BMI was thirty two. Systemic examination does not reveal any major abnormality. And a present laboratory report, which was done by gynecologist, due to which she has referred to. A doctor that was fasting blood sugar was one thirty, HbA one c seven point one, TSH three, lipid normal, blood count normal, creatinine normal, urine showing eight to ten per cells. Ultrasound was done due to lower abdominal pain and just delivered a baby. Sonography was also normal. So in conclusion, we have a thirty two year female recently. Then LSTS two month back, eight present she is giving feeding to her baby, found itching in private part due to a urinary tract, genital tract issue and abnormal sugar level. So now we have a question in our mind that uh, she was GDM. She was well controlled with uh, Levimir and Aspart in last trimester. And those were not much higher, but till whether she has given proper advice, why she had come on second or or, or eighth week with her abnormal sugar report and private part issue, whether she was converted to type two diabetes or she was undiagnosed type one. So, in nutshell, we can think that most likely she had GDM. And right now, she found abnormal blood sugar level at the end of two months of postpartum stage. There was no previous data showing abnormal sugar level in first trimester. And immediately after delivery, postpartum sugar level was also normal. So it can be a GDM which was developed type two diabetes because HbA1c is seven point one and fasting sugar is one thirty. So in In it, uh, all our data, forty to fifty percent of GDA patients may develop type two diabetes later in her life. So, what are the issues? What happens? Why we are concerned about uh, uh, sugar monitoring? Why we are concerned about close supervision? Why we are concerned about frequent follow up? Even though post delivery sugar was normal, even though we are thinking that this lady should be monitored. There need a meticulous follow up after delivery, and there should be close partnership and close relationship and close conversation between diabetologist and obstetrician, which is very very crucial and which is not possible due to busy practice of diabetologist as well as gynecologist. So, what we have to do? What should be the strategy? How we can prevent development of diabetes later on? postpartum follow up of gdt is a mandatory in all cases of gdm after 6 week at the end of 6 week if normal glucose tolerance then we have to reassess glycemia at the pre year interval if at the end of 6 week patient having a pre diabetes means impaired glucose tolerance or if by fasting glucose then annual assessment of glycemia and intensive lifestyle modification should be there intensive lifestyle modification uh, in, includes proper training about exercise proper dietary modification well balanced diet stress free life proper sleep pattern timing of diet meal content of diet and etc but if we found at the end of 6 week that these parameters are Or favoring a type one or type two diabetes, then we should consider and treat as a diabetes. But there are certain issue till patient is leading, till patient and till female is uh, giving breast feed to a baby. There are certain restrictions about use of molecules. All GDM, even though 
they are not having a abnormal GTT, there should be live shell modification aiming at weight reduction also because in postpartum stage there will be lots of weight gain and that is going to create a trouble in the later of her life. In postpartum stage, all of our management plan should be individualized according to the need of the patient, according to clinical condition, according to custom, according to religion, according to cultural pattern, and according to family lifestyle and family health and family dietary pattern. We need a glycemic management. We need a close supervision of glycemic management. Nutrition management should be well planned. Patients should encourage to uh, reduce carb intake, specifically simple carb intake, less than 50%, protein intake should be promoted, saturated fat intake should be restricted, fiber and uh, milk products should be uh, involved, high fiber diet should be involved. There should be certain strategy with discussion with gynecologists about contraception to prevent uh, again getting pregnant in the breastfeeding phase. Future pregnancy planning should be well planned to avoid uh, uh, again a uh, uh, small interval pregnancy and to have a better healthy baby in a next uh, planning. Lifestyle changes is the necessity to prevent uh, further weight gain and to prevent further metabolic changes and OGDT at the end of six weeks is a must and if it's missed then whenever patient comes within six months or one year we have to do it and we have to follow the certain protocol. So there are specific criteria about it that is at the end of six weeks, give a 75 gram of glucose as we are giving in the GTT at the end of two hour OGTT, we have to follow if it's normal, then we have to assess every three years if it's impaired fasting or impaired glucose tolerance or both. We need a free, proper lifestyle changes. Metformin may be considered and yearly assessment of glycemic status should be there. If it, these reports convert it as a diabetes type 1 or type 2, we should follow the protocol of diabetes treatment. This is the ACUG guideline for postpartum screening of abnormal glucose tolerance in women who had a GD. So, in postpartum diabetes management, as we have discussed, lifestyle is based of treatment well-planned diet, scheduled exercise, stress-free environment, and proper sleep pattern, which is very, very crucial. After delivery, baby is sleeping at an erratic time. That's why mother's sleep will be disturbed, and this disturbance of sleep will create a whole trouble in his circadian rhythm that will create lots of issues. Usually, in postpartum phase, if we can say that it, which is a safe molecule, only metformin and insulin is safe, a uh, need of insulin should be as per requirement that decision should be taken by diabetologists. Use of other OHA is not 100% safe, glycolazide, glabenclamide, or glyperidide, or gliburide, or glabenclamide, or glimipride. All they can pass through breast milk and they can create a certain times hypoglycemia. And there are a certain issue related to. Uh, for baby. DPP pure, there are no enough data. SGLD2 inhibitors can create a trouble, sometimes development of kidney related issues. And uh, OA, other OHA like pyogetazone and acarbuz are not well studied, still not having enough evidence and uh, profound data to use such molecule in postpartum stage. So, if we can say what we can use very, very safely with 100% uh, safety precaution, then metformin and insulin is the molecule that we can use very, very safely. Other all molecules are in portion. Sugar monitoring should be individualized as per need, as per just impaired glucose tolerance or type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes and follow up also should be modified as per need of the patient and as per clinical characteristic of patient. We need to uh, keep on evaluating end organ to prevent further end organ issues. Vaccination should be promoted as per protocol. Contraception should be well explained and should be followed in proper. So thank you very much. I will end my session here and I will. Uh, uh,